In this video, we're going to take a look at using observables inside of our Fuse applications. I've gone ahead and made a new Fuse app by saying Fuse Create App. And the name of my app is, of course, Fuse Observables. After which, I've run CD Fuse Observables. And then I'll open this up inside of our editor by saying Code Dot. We'll be looking at this in the context of user input and we'll be using a very simplified example. But if you've used things like RxJS before or you've seen the observable pattern before, then you should have a basic idea at least of what an observable is. It essentially allows us at a very basic level to subscribe to a stream of data which makes it very useful for user interface views and things like form inputs. Inside of our app, we can head over to mainview.ux and we can add a new tag for JavaScript. And inside of our JavaScript tag, we want to require the fuse.js observable. So let's make it var observable equal to require fuse.js slash observable. After which I want to export a variable named name in which we can display this name on screen. So that will be an observable of Paul. Now in this circumstance, we also could simply just assign this to the string of Paul. And at this moment in time, we would get the exact same response. But let's make it an observable so we can see the changes on screen. So this here is require to use observables. And this is our observable data. So because we've exported our observable, what we can then do is display this data on screen and subscribe to that observable. So if we made a text and we give this the value of name, and then inside of our terminal, we can run fuse preview and this will open up our project and any changes that we make will be live reloaded. So at the very top left of the screen, we have this name equal to Paul. Just to make this a little easier to read, I'm gonna add some font size of something like 200. So our application now says Paul on screen and this is an observable value. So this means that this value, if we edited this variable, this would update our UI. To prove that this is the case, we can also make a text view. And that text view can have the value of name once again and the font size of 200. I will add this inside of a stack panel so that each one of these items are on top of one another. So right now, you see that we have this text at the top and the text view on the bottom. If we change this variable to instead say div, you can see that our top text updates. And this is because that information is being updated live because we're subscribing to that observed data. To prove that this is actually observable, if we remove the observable and the parentheses and we simply assign this to be Paul, and if we went ahead and changed this to div, you can see that the top text does not change. And this is because this variable here or this value here in the view is not necessarily being subscribed to. So it's not an observable piece of data. When we make things an observable and bind it to the view, Fuse is automatically subscribing to the observable and therefore watching for any changes. We can also take this a little bit further. If we wanted to run some particular code when the value changes on screen, so this is run code when the value changes. And what I'm going to do is change this to be var name instead of exporting it at this point. And we're gonna say name.onValueChanged. We need to pass in the current module. This is just for scoping and we can also add a function which returns us the current item on screen. 
So we can even call this nim. So if we were to console.log and perhaps say something like current value plus nim and we'll keep everything ES5 for now and what we want to do is export the name object once again. I've taken this out of compact view and if I go ahead and change the text view you can see at the bottom left of the screen that the current value is changing. We get that console log with the current value and each time we add something to our text view that is logged out to the console. So that's how we can perform particular actions when a value has changed. So at this point, things like validators would be good to add or anything else that depends on the current value of this editable item. We can also perform things like map on our observable. And these are things we'll get into in the future videos, but for now, I just wanted to cover a very basic implementation of observables inside of Fuse. Don't forget to check out paulhalliday.io for more courses and free videos. And until that time, hit that subscribe button to stay updated, and I'll see you soon in that next video.